It's been quite a ride, but since I've started doing SAT questions, I've in fact done 98% of all the hard questions available in the SAT Educator Question Bank. There's like 3,000 questions in there. And also, I've done over 1,200 SAT questions in Khan Academy. And from all those questions, I've learned two key principles that you absolutely must know to be able to solve any type of question. Okay, so what exactly are these principles? Well, the first one is what we call schema activation. Okay, that's just a whole bunch of buzzwords. Like, what does that actually mean? Basically, it just boils down to being able to recognize the problem type because if you've done like addition or subtraction or multiplication for those means, if I said four times five, you would instantly know it. And that's because you've done so much repetition, right? Your brain gets to a point where you can instantly recognize the type of problem as computational, something that's more abstract, right? You need to apply that same concept to the SAT. The SAT has templates for its questions, right? So these are what we call our core problem archetypes, and they will take variations of these, changing numbers and all that. But the core fundamental is you need to understand what type of question it is, right? Because if you understand what type of question it is, you'll understand the steps you need to take to solve it. The steps that you take to solve a problem is different for everybody. And so as long as you figure that out in advance to actually gain that question on test day, you will be set. Okay, so here is a quick example, right? Both of these questions, if 2x plus 3 equals 9 was the value of 6x minus 1 in that word problem on the right, these are both labeled as the same type of question by College Board, right? linear equations in one variable. How someone might approach their schema in solving these questions will differ, right? On the left side, someone could instantly solve that pretty quickly with Desmos. On the right side, there's tons of different met methods that you could actually use. And so it's all based upon the steps that you choose to take that work for you. All right, let's talk about flow state real quick. It meshes really well with preparing for the SAT. Stop trying to memorize the steps, right? To actually find your schema and those steps that work for you try and find similar questions. Not only are those similar questions inadvertently maybe gonna be the same types of steps or same types of templates that you have to work with, but even if they're in the same realm, right, you could find similarities between these different questions, and then when you get something super complicated on the SAT, you can be set for that. And this is just the idea of flow state. It's pretty simple. It's basically like you don't wanna be super challenged, right, where you feel like, oh, I got no chance of how to do this, but then you don't wanna be just super easy. You just wanna just above your ability so that your brain feels challenged, you're actually able to grow. And that's exactly what you want to do on the SAT to be able to grow and increase your performance, okay? So with that in mind, let's talk about the second principle, which is answer choice anticipation. This one's super simple. If you get a multiple choice question, instead of chopping between the answers, right? Like, oh, is this the correct answer? Or is this the correct answer? And now you're confused, right? Come up with some sort of answer. It doesn't even have to be the actual answer before you look at the answer choices. A rough value, right, if you're doing math. Or maybe if it's English, a great strategy is to take out a piece of paper and write out a dummy answer, a phrase, logic, anything that helps you look at your own thinking, see what you already come up with, and then compare that thinking to the existing answer choices, and then find the best match, okay? That's going to help you not fall into those traps that the SAT makers of those questions they know exactly how to create questions that will make you fail and pick the wrong answer. And some more specific tips to the sections on math. Don't just solve the question immediately, right? Do stuff like back solving, estimating, plugging answers in, whatever. English, don't just reread -read the entire paragraph. You're not going to get any new content from that. Really focusing on the small nuances, tone shifts, you know, the functions of the paragraphs, like what do they actually mean? And then any areas with tons of evidence that you can really zone in on, look at it and see if the text supports your answer choices and something you can do as well is to just take out a bunch of multiple choice questions cover up the answer choices and then don't look at them until you've come up with your prediction answer it doesn't even have to be the real answer there last thing here for the english section is to know to think objectively right when you have different types of systems of thinking there's this research that's done on it system one versus system two basically if you're being rational and objective right it clears you more of the emotion that might come from open-ended valuations. And while, you know, open-endedness and creativity might be good in other sectors of life, on the SAT, it's super crucial that you don't dabble in that nature simply to not get yourself more confused. So that does it for the entire video, guys. If it helped you, make sure you subscribe and share with a friend. And I will be coming out with more SAT videos in the future. And so you do not want to miss those.